Hi, so my name is Ruben Nicholas. I'm a British artist. I was born in Birmingham, and Birmingham, over the years, has produced many creative people, um, probably more so in terms of music, really, with bands such as UB40, uh, Black Sabbath, Duran Duran. So maybe growing up uh, surrounded by creative forces, um, this has had some kind of influence on me. I went to school in a place called Bromsgrove, which is a town not far from Birmingham. Um, and my school era, or my age group really, produced um, some very creative people. Um, there was uh, a guy called Soweto Kinch, uh, the jazz musician, who won a MOBO. There was Richie Neville, who was in the pop group Five. He was in my year at school, also in my house as well. And there was a lady called Olivia Safe, who went on to become a top opera singer. Again, all of them really are, are music related, but music and visual art are intrinsically linked um, as music definitely affects my mood when I'm painting. I also like to use language as well in my work. And another old boy who went to my school, definitely not from my um, not from my era, probably about a hundred odd years before, but um, was the famous poet A. E. Hausman. And maybe on some level, I picked up the spirit of the poet being around me in the school that I went to because. Um, I, I, I like to use words in everything that I do and I've written lots of poetry over the years so it's a nice thought that, that maybe maybe I, I picked up the spirit of A. A. Asman on some level um, I'm not really sure how my background influences how I see the world and create art um, I was definitely a bit of a rebel when I was younger I never really liked to be controlled um, so maybe this manifests itself in my work that clearly exhibits references to um, power and control. I had a very happy upbringing, um, but essentially I see the world as quite a dark place, really. Uh, I think there is so much wrong with the world that we live in and so much that we don't understand. I think it's hard to be positive about an existence that most people spend under the control of power. Um, more speculatively, under the influence of unseen forces that we cannot comprehend and, well, ultimately death. I don't know, maybe at some point I got seduced by the darkness that exists in this world and maybe I like the Darth Vader of art, I don't know. As far as my career goes, I started out, rediscovered art really about 10 years ago when I started selling small pieces on eBay. I used the, well, well, I began using the pseudonym Kill the Sofa as I was uncomfortable using my own name at the time. Um, and I started to sell these small A4 pieces and I used to sell them on eBay for like five, five pounds or something like that. And as the weeks went by, um, they grew to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. And eventually um, I found somebody was selling them um, on a European online auction site. And um, anyway, I managed to get um, an account. And well, the rest, rest is history, really. Um, I escalated the size that I was working from up to a metre square to eventually two metre square dip titches, doing trip titches. And I, I used the name Kill the Sofa um, for many years, selling my artwork all over the world. Um, and until recently, uh, really, just maybe about six months ago when I decided that it was time to, to stop using um, a pseudonym and was more comfortable that I wanted to use my own name, um, Ruben Nicholas. So my biggest influence is, um, right, okay, so I think the main one really is uh, Salvador Dali. And I think this comes from when I was at school and I was maybe about eight, nine, ten years old. And we had to queue up every single day to go into dinner, into the canteen. 
and there was a painting hanging on the wall that I had to walk past every single day. And for some reason, I always used to get stuck in the queue right in front of this painting. And it was um, The Persistence of Memory, which is obviously one of Dali's most famous paintings. But I was constantly entranced by it every time I managed to get stuck in front of this painting while I was waiting to get into the dining room. And I think that absolutely on some level, having to look at this painting that as an eight, nine, ten year old who didn't really understand what he was looking at, but was looking at a piece of genius. And that has definitely impacted upon um, myself and my artwork. And everything that Dali does, I, I just think is genius. Um, delving into these dreamscapes and the surrealism and I definitely like to go off into a a realm with my artwork that is um, dark and uh, dreamlike and the kind of imagery that you only really see when you're on another plane, when you're asleep, if that makes any sense. And Dali is definitely, for me, probably uh, the number one influence. I love de Kooning as well. Absolutely love de Kooning. I definitely think I've got to address the whole Basquiat thing because I have been um, labelled as being too similar to Basquiat before. Um, but I think it's important to point out that taking nothing away from Basquiat, who was an absolute genius, and everything he did, or a lot of that he did, um, some of the paintings were just absolutely incredible, but he did not invent Art Brut, and Art Brut was around a long time before Basquiat. And really, Art Brut was made famous during the 80s with his artwork from the art boom in the 80s. And it was just reinvented as, well, I think they called it neo-expressionism or something like that. But, you know, yes, he was an absolutely unbelievable artist and some of his artwork, artwork is incredible. But to say that he invented the style, I think is incorrect. Um, I have a style that is very much art brute and um i like to use language and yes there are similarities but there are similarities between many other artists who exist in the same style frame over the years and yeah sometimes i think it's unfair that i i, I get grief for being similar to somebody who didn't invent something but um yeah, taking nothing away from him. Like again, another incredible artist. I've also got to say Picasso, obviously, and um, Aronimus Bosch as well. Um, some of the stuff that he did was, you know, just incredible, especially of the time that, that he was working in. Uh, the biggest challenge of being an artist, uh, I think, really keeping people interested in what you're doing and your artwork I think it's it's always the hardest thing to keep people interested because ultimately somebody else is coming along doing something fresh and whilst you don't want to change what you do as your style and uh, what you're known for I think you have to keep it fresh on some level I always like to try new things but again without getting too far away from what I just do naturally. Otherwise, if I'm trying too hard to do something else, it's not really what would naturally come out of me as artwork. Okay, advice to my younger self. Well, actually, it's got nothing to do with art. Um, I think really I would I would say to my younger self, not 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 childlike young, but when I was about twenty, to keep persisting of being a footballer. Because art has been very good to me and I absolutely love what I do. And ultimately, um, I think this was what I was meant to do anyway, not football. Um, but I always wanted to be a footballer. I was desperate to be a professional footballer and nearly did it when I was in my early 20s. Um, you know, I had opportunities to be a professional footballer and um, just drifted, really. The moment drifted from me. But yeah, ultimately, I would, I would have absolutely loved to be a professional footballer. Um, definitely for my team, Aston Villa. Um, I I would have been an absolute goal machine for Aston Villa, but um, yeah, that's maybe something for another life. 
have I ever worked in any unconventional mediums? Um, not really. Um, essentially, I love the way it's possible to create imagery with paint. So that has always been um, my go-to medium. Okay, do I listen to music when I'm working? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, music and art go hand in hand. Um, it helps to evoke emotions and energy. I normally start a session with some like some pretty laid back stuff, maybe some classical or um, some jazz. Um, but by the time I'm deep into the work, I've I've got my headphones on and um, it's usually house music, to be quite honest. I used to DJ in my 20s and um, I used to play a lot of underground house, lots of um, Chicago house, sometimes techno. Um, and spent a lot of time in Ibiza, um, in the clubs out there. And, but yeah, I used to love, um, still do as well, really, to be quite honest, Derek Carter, DJ Sneak, um, Davey Morales, you know, Roger Sanchez. Um, but, uh, yeah, house music is the one really, um, I need energy when I'm, I'm working and, um, if I haven't got the energy, um, I tend to lose interest quite quickly. Okay, the best reaction I ever got from a painting. Um, yeah, I did a painting for um, a friend who drinks in um, my local pub, actually, the village where I live at the moment. And he asked me to do um, like a, 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 you know, a diptych for him, a two meter diptych. So I asked him for an A4 page of words um, that meant something to him. And, um, you know, I painted him uh yeah this two meter diptych and thankfully he was blown away um which was a really nice reaction you know to have somebody you already know to to say um say uh, such you know nice things about it and he has it in his house um hanging a room and he's always telling me that when people come round and they walk in um they exhibit you know a similar appreciation of the work which is you know it's really nice to hear it's still getting a good response. Okay, what do you hope people take from your artwork? I think ultimately um, a different view of the world and our existence. Um, my artwork definitely goes into the deeper and darker realms of what and who we are and where we've come from. So hopefully my artwork shines a light on the reality of our existence.